What does it mean to be welcomed at table? Our scripture is from Luke, the 14th chapter, verse 1, and verses 7 through 14. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guest chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the, at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host, and the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all who humble him, themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or your rich neighbors in case they may be able to invite you in, in return, and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. I have a friend, a pastor, who tells how he learned everything he needed to know about life at the dining room table. A typical Sunday meal at his mother's dining room would include roast beef, ham, chicken, string beans, peas, mashed potatoes, sweet potatoes, potato salad, fruit cup, fruit salad, baked apples, and dessert. Each meal usually began with the same prayer, Lord, bless this food to the nourishment of our bodies and our bodies to thy service. The pastor says that he did not realize that how that prayer had been answered every Sunday until he was preparing his mother's funeral sermon. The body of each family member was nourished, but more importantly, each family member was nourished not only by food, but by the lesson about God's love that they learned from their mother as she prepared the food so lovingly. No matter how busy the week had been, how hectic, how wonderful, how sad, how terrible, all members of the family knew that they were welcomed at table by their mother and by God. Welcome to table. Reverend Charles Swindoll tells a story about the time when his children, Curtis, who was six, and Carissa, who was four, were at table with their family. Swindoll was hoping to teach Curtis the importance of being a good host, and so he suggested to Curtis that he should offer to Carissa a piece of chicken. Now, Curtis, Swindoll says, was very hungry, and the, play, and the plate was right in front of him, but he was willing to be a host. And so he took the platter of chicken, held it out to Carissa, and said, take a piece. Carissa says, I'll take a foot. Well, Curtis looked at his father and back to Carissa and said, Carissa, Mother doesn't cook the feet of chicken. Oh, okay. I'll take a hand. Carissa. Mother doesn't cook hands because chickens don't have hands. They have wings. Oh, I hate wings, Carissa said. Give me a belly button. By this time, Curtis was losing patience of being a good host. And he grabbed a piece of chicken 
and gave it to Carissa and said, here, take it. This is the best I can do. Welcome to table. Those times when we learn about what it means to be host and hostesses, to extend God's grace at table. It is no wonder why the two great stories of the Bible, of God's intervention on behalf of God's people, occur around a table, or recounted around the table, shared through a meal. The first one is in the Old Testament, in the 12th and 13th chapters of the Old Testament book of Exodus. This is the, the recounting of the story of the Passover meal, when the blood of the Passover lamb, when the Passover lamb was slain and its blood was, paste, was placed on the doorpost of the homes of the Hebrew slaves. The purpose of this was to be a signal to the angel of death in the 10th plague of Egypt, the firstborn of the dead being slain by the angel of death. It is through the recounting of this meal that the story of freedom is remembered, the story of God's deliverance from slavery into a promised land is told. While it's the Passover meal that provides the setting for the great meal of the New Testament, Christians call the Lord's Supper. In this meal, which Jesus shares with his disciples on the night before his crucifixion, Jesus recounts for his disciples the story of salvation and of how God was preparing the way for the story of salvation to be told through Jesus himself. As Jesus becomes the Passover lamb whose blood will be shed on the cross. It is on this occasion of a meal the night before his crucifixion that Jesus prepares the way for the cross to become the focal point of God's salvation. Jesus at the table takes bread and blesses it and gives it to his disciples and says, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. It is no mistake that Jesus at the table should choose to take the cup and bless it and give it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Drink this in remembrance of me. It is that table, the Lord's table, that we remember that Jesus is present with us still, just as surely as he was present with the disciples in the upper room, Jesus is present with us now, welcoming us to be guests at God's table. While in Jesus' day, being welcomed at table was primarily a social practice, not an occasion for remembering God's salvation, but an occasion to be with the right people, a social practice that allowed you to achieve certain status among the people whom, with whom you lived and with whom you associated. Associating with people at table, or should I should say associating with the right people at table was important in Jesus' day. And if you were host, if you were a guest at table, then eventually you would be a host at table so that the practice of social status could be perpetuated. Well, the Gospel of Luke records that Jesus turned the self-focused goal of societal status on its head as he was talking with the leader of the Pharisees on one Sabbath day. The Pharisee who had invited Jesus to be a guest, among others, at his home on the Sabbath day, was, was told by Jesus these words, says, when you invite to table, you should welcome the following, the poor, the cripple, the lame, the blind. 
and the Society of Jesus Day, these were the guests at table who would never be able to host a table in return, who would not be able to perpetuate the cycle of societal status. They would never be able to, uh, to, to reciprocate in hosting a banquet, which is precisely the reason why Jesus told the leader of the Pharisees that these are the people who should be on his next guest list, teaching that their inclusion on the guest list had a deeper eternal meaning than simply societal influence. Jesus tells the leader of the Pharisees, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. I think Jesus told the leader of the Pharisees to invite to the table these people who would not be able to reciprocate his hospitality was to remind the leader of the Pharisees and to remind us as well that everyone is welcome at God's table. I think the reason Luke includes this story in his gospel, which is the only gospel of the four that has this story, is because Luke wanted us to know that the story of God's salvation it is, is the story of everyone being welcomed at table by Jesus, the Passover lamb. There is a spiritual that's called sitting at the welcome table. It came out of a time of slavery when those who were enslaved would dream of one day sitting at the welcome table in freedom, welcome at the, at the gospel table by Jesus. I'm going to attempt to share with you the tune of this, and I invite you to share along as well. We're going to sit at the welcome table. We're going to sit at the welcome table. We're going to sit at the welcome table. One of these days, hallelujah, one of these days. Who are you inviting to sit at the table? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, amen. Yes.
place at the table to live without fear and simply to be to work to speak out to witness and worship for everyone born the right to be free and God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy compassion and peace yes God will delight when we are creators of justice justice and Let us pray. God, bless all who sit at your table and grant that we may share with those who are not at the table the invitation to come and to be welcomed. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. May God bless you at the welcome table.